for some strange reason, it's like people feel threatened by the truth. And the truth is, we've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed by the adults around you, by the parents around you. We've been brainwashed by society. We've been brainwashed by culture. And you can go, well, it's not my fault. My life's the way it is. It's their fault. And that's what most people do. If you've noticed the last really 18 months, but especially the last five or so years, society has rewarded victimhood in the biggest way possible. If you can blame someone else why you don't have the money you want, why your health isn't the way you want, why you don't have the freedom or the desires, whatever it is, if you can make a good enough reason that it's something else's fault, whether it's society or corporations or your parents or the adults or the system, you actually get rewarded. And then we spend the rest of our life trying to stay in that box because we get rewarded if we're a big enough victim. It's the giant victim trophy. And so in this video, I'm gonna break down why people feel th so threatened by this very powerful truth I'm about to share with you. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to break that brainwashing so that you can get what you want in life. Because that's the thing, it's not just brainwashing for the sake of brainwashing. What it is is it stops you. It stops you from getting the money that you want, which means the freedom which means the impact in the world because money helps you extend the good that you can do far beyond your own physical presence. Don't you agree that right now that's very important? So if you could double your income, if you could increase your confidence to a level like never before, if you can increase your health, your fitness, your energy, your productivity, your sense of purpose and aliveness, wouldn't you want that? Don't you think it'd be good for other people too? That's what we're gonna do in this video. Just basically decode that whole system. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you hit the like button on this video. Right there down below is my free success hypnosis. I made a success hypnosis to reprogram your subconscious mind. When you reprogram the subconscious, your whole life changes. And the subconscious, we used to think we're stuck with it. You know that old adage, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, actually you can through repetition and very powerful hypnosis. It's free, it's right there down below. It's jakeshypnosis.com to turn your subconscious mind into a magnet to help you attract what you want. It's in the description, pinned to the comments. Let's dive right into this video. If you think about it like this, you know, there's the popular you gotta get outside the box, man. You gotta think outside the box, dude. But what we don't realize is our entire life is a box. In the personal development movement, there's that cute saying, your story. What's your story? Do you wanna rewrite your story? And then like the really nice music plays and then everyone holds hands and it's like empowering, guys. But think about it like this. Your story is a psychological phenomenon because psychologists say that we have approximately 65,000 thoughts in a day. It's crazy to think, it almost doesn't feel real, right? It's like 65,000? I mean, I would figure maybe 2,000, 3,000. Well, that's because they're unconscious, they're subconscious. We don't even know that they're happening. Sub means below. So they're literally passing below the awareness of conscious thought. They've been programmed by the adults, the parents, and society around you. So ask yourself a couple questions. What did you learn about money from the adults around you? What did you learn about love? Did your parents get divorced? How did that affect you? What type of assumptions about reality did you make afterwards? What type of assumptions did you make after some personal trauma? Maybe you got cheated on when you were in high school and it was so deeply upsetting that subconsciously you've always protected yourself from relationships because you've associated relationships with pain. Consciously you really want love, but subconsciously it's another story. And this goes on and on and on. It controls every action, habit, and behavior of our life. It's called a paradigm. A paradigm is a multitude of habits. That's all it is. Habits are both um, through actual physical things that we do, what time you brush your teeth at or what leg you put your pants on to what you do every time you get money. Why is it some people make good money but they never have any? Well, because their habit is suspended as soon as they get it. Why is it some people are always in credit card debt? Well, maybe the adults around them or the society convinced them of it and they always thought it was okay and normal because everybody else is in credit card debt too. So these habits affect everything. How we react, 
when relationships get intimate or something doesn't go the way we want or some of our fears of being left come up, all of these habits are stuck in there. And so to start this off, I wanna ask you one simple question. What is the number one idea or story or belief that you inherited that you're ready to let go of? It could have come from the parents, the adults, it could have come from your teacher, it could have come from your neighbor, it could have come from a traumatic experience. What is one of these? Because we sit in this box our whole life, right? We don't even know we're in the box because we've been in the box for so long. You know, now they say, it's the new normal. Well, the real new normal is a box that we sit in that we don't know we're in because we're used to the story for so long of our life. Well, I was just never good at making money. Well, I've never been able to find the right soulmate. So it's like an invisible ceiling, but we don't know that the ceiling is self-imposed. Uh, there's a quote by U.S. Anderson, and he says that all limitations are self-imposed. If you can't take 100% responsibility with that, then it's always going to be the government's fault or the system's fault, and the world may be unfair. But if that becomes your modus operandi, your GPS system, you'll only have the universe prove it to you over again. You say, gee, Jake, I told you it's not fair. It's unjust. That's why I can't do it. And this happened to me. And this, I'm always have bad luck. I have bad karma. So I want you to comment down one of those things if you want right there down below that you're ready to let go of. It might be something you heard about money. It might be something you heard in religion. It might have to do with love. What's one thing that you've just thought was real or normal for you? It's been with you for so long. Maybe you haven't even analyzed it in a while, but it's a self-imposed ceiling. It may have been inherited to you from other people, but now let's take responsibility for it because while it had, maybe they cultivated that idea, society cultivated the environment, your household, it's us that have chosen to believe it and believe that it's real, but it's not real. And that's what William Blake said. Once the doors of perception are cleansed, everything will appear as it is, infinite. So comment down below one story, belief, idea that you're ready to let go of. So that's why people always go like, why do you always talk about your hypnosis? Because it's important because your whole life is subconscious. So if you haven't yet, make sure you watch the rest of this video first before you get it, but it's right there down below. It's jakeshypnosis.com and it's free right there down below. So here's a couple questions to ask. Who would you be without that thought? Byron Katie, she wrote an amazing book called Loving What Is. And she says, who would you be without that thought? Well, who would I be without the thought that I'm too young or I'm too old? Seriously, who would you be without the thought that you can't make the amount of money that you want for whatever reason? You didn't go to college, you're too young, you're too old, no one taught you, you don't have the right resources, you don't know how, you don't have a skill, you don't have the time. I don't have the time. Well, every single person has all the time that there ever was and ever will be. Nobody gets more time. And if we say, I don't have enough time, that's the exact thing that we're doing. We're not taking 100% total responsibility. If you take 99% responsibility for your life circumstances, you can't change them. There's one degree, one percentage at which you are not able to shift that. So who would I be without the thought that there wasn't enough time, that I didn't have enough of it? Who would I be without the thought that I'm not good enough? Who would I be without the thought that I have a learning problem? Who would I be without the thought that uh, I'm tired, that I don't have enough time with my kids? There's too much going on, I have a family, so I don't have the time to make any more money. Who would I be without the thought that my boss sucks? Who would I be without the thought that if my parents were better or different, my life would be better? Who would I be without the thought of, right? And it just goes on and on and on. So like, be with me here, at, like really ask yourself this question. I want this to be a video that actually changes your life. Otherwise, I wasted my time and you wasted your time. We both lose, right? So think about it. Who would you be without the thought? I'll give you an example. When I dropped out of college as a 19 year old, I backpacked around the world. I was reading Wayne Dyer and all these people. And I said, I want to be like that. That's what I want to do. But I dropped out of college. I, fa I failed junior English class in high school. 
I, I was prescribed and diagnosed with ADD and ADHD when I was in high school. So I thought I couldn't focus. I just thought I wasn't smart. And so when I decided I was gonna drop out of college, write a book, on top of the fact that my pretty much everyone around me thought I was insane, what are you doing, you nut job? Do this when you're 65. And then every publishing company said no to me when I wrote the book. I kept getting my outside world to prove to me my own beliefs. That's all that was. And I could have said, see, the world's so unjust. It, they've set the system up where if you don't go to college and you don't do this, you can't be successful. And I'm too young anyways. But for whatever reason, it finally hit me that that was a belief system I created. And Steve Jobs in his autobiography, he has a, he has a thing that he used to, he used to see himself as the exception to every rule. Try on that affirmation. I am the exception to everything I, every rule. I'm the exception to every rule, no matter what. I started actually saying that to myself all the time as a 20 year old, when every author is like, yeah, it's really hard and you don't make any money. I just started saying, I'm the exception to every rule. Everything I do succeeds and prospers. I'm wonderfully blessed financially. I'm the exception to every rule. Hey, guess what? I'm the exception to every rule. And I just started doing that over and over and over. So comment that down below. I am the exception to every rule. Comment that down below. But don't just like comment it like, this guy is just trying to get more comments on his video. Like embody it. What would it mean if you were the exception to every rule? So what would your life look like without that thought? Without that invisible ceiling, that self-imposed ceiling, what would your life look like? What would it feel like? Would you feel more confident? Would you feel more empowered? Would you not be depressed anymore? Would you go like, ha, ah, yay, and you'd get like really excited? What would happen if you immediately let go of that thought? Because it could happen like this. It's a choice. On some subconscious level, you're getting something out of keeping that thought whether it's uh, the excuse that you don't have to work as hard as you want, whether it's uh, some extra attention, we're getting something from it. Whether it's just to justify our belief so we can feel bad again, right? Like, are you ready to let it go? And what's on the other side of it? If, if we realize every limitation is self-imposed and they're all just stories, literally, they're just ideas we've inherited for so long we think they're real. What's on the other side? And I want to end this up with one more powerful part. If you haven't yet, make sure you smash that like button and repeat this. I am the exception to every rule. You are the exception to every rule. And the last thing that I want to ask you to just like truly think about this, um, is that thought true? In Byron Katie's book, she says, is this true? And we may think it's true because we believed it for so long, but there's a difference between normal and true. They're two different things, but we confuse the two of them because the uh, body is the extension of the subconscious mind and the nervous system is the extension of the subconscious mind. And our nervous system memorizes what we're used to, what's normal. And when our nervous system memorizes it, when our cells encode with it, when the neurons in our brain wire and build synaptic connections based off of normal, we also think it's real because you get a sensory feedback from it. But there's a difference between normal and real. So, is it real? So I asked myself that. Is it true that I am too young to be successful? That was what I asked myself. I asked myself, is it true that because no one will publish my book, I can't sell 10,000 copies? That was my first goal. Is that true? It could be relatively true, but there's a difference between a relative truth and an absolute truth. Is it an absolute truth that I, am, that I was too young? No, it's not. Is it an absolute truth 
that it is too hard to sell 10,000 copies, get picked up by a major publishing company, which by the way, all this ended up happening. I sold 20,000 copies, the mostly out of the trunk of my car. Penguin Random House, the number one book publishing company in the world, literally in the world, when I was 22 years old, they paid me money to write a book. A couple years ago, I dropped out of college and a couple years before that, I was in the principal's office because my English teacher kicked me out of class when I was a junior in high school. And a couple years before that, my mom was writing my college admission essays because I didn't know how to focus and write. So is it an absolute truth? Is it an absolute truth that your soulmate is not out there and there is no such thing as true love? No, it's a relative truth based off of your normal. Is it an absolute truth that you can't double your income in 12 months? Like really ask her, like really think about this, right? I'm not just like streaming words for no reason whatsoever. Like, is it an absolute truth that you cannot double your income? Is it an absolute truth that you cannot have your dream home within 24 months? Is it an absolute truth that you can't be out of debt within six months or weeks? Is it an absolute truth you can't add an extra $2,000 a month? Is it an absolute truth that you don't have enough time? There's not enough time. Is it an absolute truth that this relationship is ruined? The one with your spouse is unfixable? Is that an absolute truth? It might be, I'm not sure. But ask yourself, is this story, remember on part one, right? Let's bring this all the way back. I said, think of one big one that you inherited from adult society, traumatic experience. It might be around money, it might be around love, it might be around health, happiness, productivity. I don't have enough time. I'm not good with money. It could be whatever. And then let's bring it forward to what we're talking about right now. Is that one that you thought of earlier? I asked you to comment it down below if you felt comfortable. You know, you might want to keep it to yourself, but you could always make a burner YouTube account when you comment and you have like your burner account. Your burner account could be jakeducysucks at gmail.com and you comment, you could comment down. And so ask yourself, is it an absolute truth? So then let's wrap it up like this. If it's not an absolute truth, are you ready to let it go? Are you ready to stop believing in it? Because you have a choice like that. Some people go, well, I don't have a choice. And that's the victim consciousness. You have a choice what you believe. You don't have a choice of what happened to you seven years ago. You don't have a choice about who your parents were or weren't. You don't have a choice about what school you went to nine years ago. You don't have a choice of what the preacher did or said. You don't have a choice about what happened to you that one time. That one time that has truly was painful. And I get that it was painful. I'm not like trying to be an ass about it. It's just like, how much longer are we gonna carry it? And some people carry it forever because they get something from it. It might be money from the government that they get. It might be attention from their parents, even though they're now, you're now 50 and your parents are 80, but you still, they still give you money every single month because something that happened to you when you were 14 that they feel guilty about. So they've never asked you to grow up, right? Like the list just goes on and on and on. And I'm not trying to be an ass about it. I, I'm legitimately, this changed my life and, I, and, and I'm just trying to help you. There's a difference between taking 99% personal responsibility or 47% personal percent, percent responsibility or 100. They're two different things. In, in, in my TED talk, I gave a TEDx talk when I was like 20 or 21 um, that happened out of nowhere after I stopped believing in the absolute truth. The title of that talk was learning it versus living it, learning it versus living it. And it's a never ending journey, right? For all of us. Like I'm, I'm not sitting up here saying that, like that I'm, that I'm perfect at it, but I certainly have questioned my own limitations. Learning it is watching these videos, but actually not doing it not actually coming up with one of those big ideas, not actually asking yourself these questions, but living it is when you actually decide that you're ready to let go of it. So I wanna wrap this up by saying, 
Who would you be without that thought? What would your life look like without that thought? What would your future be like without that thought? What would you feel like without that idea, that story? That's all it is. It's an idea. It's a story that is normal. It's not real, but it's normal. It's not, it's probably not an absolute truth. And if we realize that it's not an absolute truth, we can just like that, drop it. And you say to a dog, drop that. Well, we can do the same exact thing with stories in our head, drop it. I'm dropping the idea that I can't double my income in 12 months. I'm dropping the idea that I'm not good enough to make more money. I'm dropping the idea that my soulmate isn't out there or that love is pain. I'm dropping that idea. I'm dropping the idea that I can't succeed because my boss sucks. And when we do that, there's amazing things on the other side. So if you enjoyed this episode, right there down below is my free success hypnosis. It's jakeshypnosis.com. It's the number one next step for you to do. Spend five minutes, start reprogramming your mind. The results are amazing. Every day I get these awesome stories of people attracting incredible things into their life just by using it. It's right there down below and it's free. Smash the like button on this video. The bell notification is what notifies you for new videos. So hit that bell notification. Find another one of my videos, click play on that and keep building up this positive energy that you're starting right now. I wanna thank you for watching this longer video than normal and going on the journey with me. Let me know if you enjoyed this one. It surely helps out the good old fashioned YouTube algorithm. I'll see you next time.